live. Perfect. Yay. Do we need to try again? Hang on. Do we need to try again? It works now. Okay, great. Excellent. All right, let's have fun. All right, today is gonna be a little bit of a lecture. Um, I'm actually putting this out there as a lecture that people can come back to and watch for manifestation for beginners. Now, I know a lot of my people aren't beginners, but even in this lecture, I promise you, you'll learn things even from an advanced standpoint that um, you haven't probably heard or haven't heard it put this way or elaborated in this capacity. It will be repurposed on YouTube, so that's not an issue and that's not a problem. But if anyone in the chat wants to control um, the chat, let me know because I have a couple of admins there. So obviously, due to the fact it's going to be a more general lecture, it can be applied to anything that you like. What I'm going to do is I am going to have my mother over here interject a couple of questions every now and then whenever she feels like someone from a beginner standpoint wouldn't understand and just kind of keep me in line because sometimes I assume people know things that maybe they have not known. So this is designed to be a good starting point and it's also going to be... Um, yeah, a place that you can just come back to again and again and learn and understand no matter what level you're at, but definitely a good introductory video. So with that being said, um, I may not do too many questions and I'm going to try to not see the chat because otherwise I get very scatterbrained very quickly for anyone who's been in my lives for a minute. Can I stay focused to the subject? Yes, I'm going to try my best. And so I'm just going to begin. For individuals who would like to know what manifestation is as a whole, and maybe, like I said, advanced individuals, you still have every opportunity to benefit from this because I am the queen of explaining things in a hundred million different ways. All I see manifestation as, and what is the first concern of some people maybe in the manifestation community from a religious background? It's magic, it's evil, it's witchcraft, it's spells or some type of psychic the, readings. Controlling the universe. Controlling things. That is the furthest thing of what manifestation is. Manifestation, by my definition, and what I also tr uh, choose to believe is the definition in Law of Assumption, is it's the controlled use of thought speech, what we speak out, what we feel, expect, and really who we are walking around in the world and being. So what I would call that is our identity. If someone was to ask, who is Sophia? Okay. Sophia would probably describe herself as, oh, I'm a very, I'm just giving an example. Like I'm a very um, fun, loving, um, open, individual who loves and cares very deeply. Now, where this applies in manifestation is we do not manifest each and every single little thing in our reality since the time we were born. That's not what manifestation is. I see a lot of people get mad at manifestation because then they're like, you're victim blaming. They just say that like as a whole, not to me, obviously. Um, oh, I hope they wouldn't say that to you. No, they don't say that to me. Um, here's the thing. Let's debunk that right now. Let's go through that commonly asked question. Manifestation is not victim blaming. What it's saying is your dominant thoughts, speech, emotions, identity, what you expect out of life is going to, like a mirror, reflect it right back to you. Can I get my mirror, please? My lovely assistant. Of course. If I expect love to not work out, if I show up in the world and I'm like, love never works for me, I promise you it won't. If I show up in the world and I expect money to be difficult, I promise you it will be. I promise you it will. So, mirror. Like we are, basically what you want to think of this as is 
you are creating your world from the inside out. I did a video on this regarding the CIA document declassified of how your inner world gets reflected into the dominant experiences you have. So where some people may get their panties in a binge is they're like, how did I create disease? You know why? Dis-ease. dis dis ease okay. outside of ease like not at ease and dispensa i think says it very lovely which he says that dis ease is not something that we sit here and manifest like this is what i want this is what i want this is what i want there are environmental factors there are dietary factors there are genetic factors there is also that one in fifty thousand chance of this permutation genetically or permutation just in your genes to reflect in your DNA. There are still, I guess you can call them like the natural ebbs and flows of the universe around you. There's also stress. Stress causes certain genetic markers to go up and down. It causes the rapid, uh, how do I say, replication of cells. And guess what a tumor is? an over excessive replication of cells that create that. So we are not creating what we want. Usually at any given point in time, we are creating who we are being, what we are expecting, how we feel about a desire. If I feel hopeless in desperation and despair about something, I'm going to get as my mirror suggests, a lot of re-articulation in my outside world because whatever is here is going to come out there. I will be aligned with certain people, places, and experiences to allow that to come to fruition. So manifestation doesn't just fall from the sky. It's based on who I'm showing up and operating as in the world. So where I want you to start to apply this to begin to use manifestation in your favor because you're always doing it as long as you have a fully functioning brain. It's not something you can partake in or opt out of for my religious people or any other people. It's always there. If you have a brain, you are manifesting. Simple. If you have a brain, you are manifesting. Even though we might not know it. Even though we might not know it. It doesn't get bonus points or you don't get to unsubscribe or opt out. If you're not aware, you're still doing it regardless. Yes. I'm like in class. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just like say two words? Sure. So remember when I had my, when I got my job? Yeah. And I came out here like crying because I was upset. Right. Because people were just beating me. Right. What did you tell me? Where you focus, how you think, what you expect is going to end up being what you manifest and attract. What did I tell you? Oh, I'm not focusing on it. That was rude. It's true. I wasn't. You were. I really wasn't. I could tell by every single ounce of how you described it that that's but what I, your focus was. I didn't was. think I was. Yeah, you didn't think you I were. Was. Yeah. I see that slap of reality. Yeah, and I'm here. And then what happened? And then you became number one in your company. Actually, I'm in the top five. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I didn't believe it. Yeah, you didn't believe it. I asked you how, how does... That's like, oh, possible. it's not possible. How is the lead generator going to do this? All these excuses, man. <laughs> excuses, excuses, excuses. I came up with a thousand of them. I know. And I was like, it really doesn't matter. You will be aligned with certain clients who actually want to buy insurance. Yes. And they did. Yes. Absolutely. I just had to bring that up, you know. Perfect. So to go into my second point of this entire experience, where I would give someone a starter pack to begin is to create, potentially, I like this idea, an alter ego. Mm, I like that. Who would you be in the world, obviously in the realm of your desire, who would you be if life hadn't let you down? If certain parts of your childhood were better? If you have any limitations on your race, religion, socioeconomic status, how life works out for you, how easy things get to be, if you have to suffer or sacrifice or if love just can never happen and money can never be in the bank and I can never get ahead. What is your inner dialogue? Imagine you just had one bad inner dialogue. 
Oh my God. One bad inner dialogue. And let's just say, it's oh my God, hang on. Can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you get my stickers that are on my little drawers? You know how I put those stickers there? Oh my God, I'm about to make an amazing point. There's stickers on your drawer? Yeah, do you know in my, uh, when we built my little dresser situation, those little stickers from Walmart? Are they here? I sure hope so. Uh, they should be somewhere on top of each or dresser. If not, I'll tell you what it is anyway, but I wish I had the Take sticker. On your desk. Take the, a look. The spare ones, you know? So going back to the alter ego, you want to create an alter ego that's so solid. You want to basically tap into the energy of if life hadn't let me down, if things had gone my way, if certain situations actually transpired in the way that I wanted, this is who I would be. This would be the non-diminished version of me. This would be improved thoughts, improved speech, improved emotion. Imagine if you came from a house or a situation where you just had this sticker on you, almost like an Eminem situation. Oh, Hello, right. my name is. And imagine your sticker says, hello, my name is, life always lets me down. Oh, no. And imagine that sticker has a magnet attached to it and embedded into your skin. Like how you would see someone with type 2 diabetes, they have that thing little implanted into their skin. And it is the most powerful magnet. And whatever you write on that sticker, which is based on your inner dialogue, your expectation, how life worked out for you, the ebbs and flows is going to end up attracting things to you to prove that sticker right. How much more careful would you be with your inner dialogue? How much more would you start backing and believing in yourself, even without evidence or proof, no matter how difficult it is, because you just don't want that sticker to bring you another experience that's going to hurt you, that's going to break your heart, that's going to discourage you, that's going to give you another reason to give up. This is the key part. You have the ability to write what's on the sticker. That is the only thing that's in your control. That is the only thing that's in your control. What you are forced to write on that sticker is what you have up here. What is your inner narrative, your inner dialogue, how you feel and expect and who you're being? Are you walking around in the world and grabbing your coffee, getting lunch, getting food, going to class, going to your job, and operating as the person that doesn't really expect that anything great is going to happen today. Mm. Doesn't really expect life to work out for them. Doesn't really believe that they can manifest in the love of their life, the love of their dreams, and that they don't have to settle. You will be met with more people who will prove that back to you. Why? Great question. I'd love to answer it. Your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind, which is something we've studied in many, many, many different experiments and brain scans. Your subconscious mind is creating itself by basically whatever you feed it. Imagine that when you were born, this up here, your brain, it is a supercomputer. Scientists can't even replicate the real thing in real life. We would need literally like football fields of neurons to just replicate this brain. Okay? You can look up anything Dr. Joe Dispenza for any information about the subconscious mind, um, creating new neural pathways, neuroplasticity, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it right now. The subconscious mind is basically your pineal gland, which is this little knob-like shaped thing. Right here in your brain. English, please. Pineal gland. English. Subconscious mind. Okay. You know. Subconscious mind. You know. Sorry. I Dr. Did, Joe Dispenza. D-I-S-P-E-N-Z-A. Dispenza. Your third eye. That's another way of putting it. Mm. So, whatever. So, going back to my example, because I'm trying to stay focused here. Focus. I'm focused, okay. man. Okay. Going back to my example, imagine when you were born, okay, because this is the actual truth, 
As long as you have a fully functioning brain that is working, meaning you are not a brain dead person, you're not on an oxygen tank or in a near life and death situation, you are always attracting certain people, places, and experiences. We cannot control the families that we are born into, the financial circumstances that we are born into, the broken homes or presence or absence of certain parents or foster cares or opportunities that have happened for us. But here is the sticky thing, okay? We, we can't control any of that. But what we can control is what we choose to identify with in our brain. So going back to my example, when you come out of your mother's womb, your brain is fully functioning. You are processing raw sensory data. I explained this in my CIA video. All my links and coaching and products and offers, everything is in my bio. Someone can maybe put that in a comment and pin it. Okay? Who do we choose? Sorry? What do we choose or who do we choose to identify with? What we choose to identify with. What we choose. Okay? So in that situation, imagine your supercomputer highway of your brain. You are processing raw sensory data at any given point in time. As a baby, always processing information. Seeing mommy and daddy, the presence or absence of it, experiencing different things. Maybe you got beaten as a child. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you had certain things work out for you. Maybe you were born into wealth. Maybe you were born into poverty. Maybe you were born into certain geographical areas in your country that are very unsafe. Maybe you've had certain projections from your family, your environment based on your race or religion. You are basically processing raw sensory data at any given point in time, any given point in time, whatever you chucked into your supercomputer highway of your brain, imagine that you are coding your own permutation of reality. You are the software developer here. You did not get a shiny little pamphlet when you were born that says, be careful don't just accept anything because whatever you choose to identify with will be versions of reality that end up mirroring that back to you in my mirror example. Because we're creating from what you convince the subconscious mind to believe. If I had a belief that said, I am someone who is a first generation American, opportunities don't happen for me. I will be aligned with people, places, experiences to confirmation bias that back to me. Why? Because the subconscious mind, the pineal gland in the brain is designed to protect me. And change requires discomfort. It requires risk. It requires believing something that was not chucked into the brain and coded into the computer. Mm -hmm. If you coded into the computer, love doesn't work out. Life doesn't happen for me. This can't work. I can't have money. I can't have money. Da, da 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 Your brain, I bet you, has attracted certain people, places, and experiences to make you believe what you are telling in your inner dialogue. You believe love didn't work out because you saw an example of it in your formative days as a child or your first big love impressed on your subconscious mind certain unfavorable stories because nobody comes out of the womb believing that love can't happen. That was a story you chucked into the supercomputer highway, you coded it in, and your brain said, yep. I will show you and I will defend this code to the death of me. Yep. I will defend this code. If you believe love doesn't work, it is not going to work. Then I will show it to you. Yes, your subconscious mind is your faithful servant. It executes everything you tell it. Or what you think. What you think, what you tell it, what you identify with that alter ego we spoke of. And it does so via confirmation bias. Yeah. Nobody got a pamphlet. Nobody controlled what home they were brought into when it comes to this, uh, when it comes to this world. We just are literally supercomputers that process raw sensory data. And we choose to keep it or chuck it. Keep it or chuck it. Keep it or chuck it. Let me give you an example. But Persis, everything that went wrong with me, is that my causing? No. 
you were someone who was unconscious to this. You are now becoming conscious to this. That's how you were brought on this page. Hi, how's it going? Now that you've been brought on this page, you have an ability to choose to redo your coding. You can say things like, oh, but I couldn't control that. I know you couldn't. I'm not saying you could, but I'm telling you if you want things to get better, if you want to really attract that man who's going to treat you like a queen, that woman who's going to treat you like a king or any variation of preferences that you have, if you want to experience that life full of money, that this is not excluded to just certain individuals. This is what high elite athletes, celebrities, and the 1% millionaire and billionaires of the world know. Controlled thought, speech, emotion, and your identity is what dictates what you attract into your life. Now that you are conscious of this experience and the fact that you are here having a spiritual experience, you're going to probably want to do some editing to your code. How do you do that? The way you do that is you practice neuroplasticity. Hi. So how do you practice neuroplasticity? Big fancy word. It's basically the creation of new neural pathways in the brain. I gave this example in a different live. If someone has the ability to cite it on YouTube or in the comment section, that would be great. So I give the example of Arnold Schwarzenegger. There big you know. biceps. Build those muscles, baby. Basically what you've done when you chucked all that information into the supercomputer highway of your brain and your brain confirmation biased it back to you because you are basically in a mirror, whatever you think, feel, believe, assume, expect, identify as is going to be what you get back out. It's like a boomerang in that essence. That means that you technically have an infinite capacity to change. The only limitation is your ability to think feel, believe, expect, identify differently. Create that alter ego as if nothing in their life ever went wrong. Exactly. As if nothing in their life ever disappointed them. As if nothing in their life hurt them. Because I promise you, here's the tricky part before I go into the point I was about to make about neuroplasticity. Remind me about that word. Is two people... Before you're even conscious of this, let's use the example of love because everyone and, their money, uh, everyone and their mother wants to manifest love. Could have their first big love in high school, okay? High school sweetheart. Two identical people from similar race, religion, background, socioeconomic status get broken up with out of the blue by their high school sweetheart. One person sees it as sheer incompatibility. Why? Because who, who they are, how they're showing up, how they're identifying, their controlled use of thought and speech, which maybe came as a positivity from the parents or just the inner sense of self-concept of how life goes for that person, doesn't discourage them. They're like, okay, we're just not compatible. Does this hurt? Absolutely. But it doesn't have anything to do with me being deficient in any way, shape, or form. The person on the other side may go through the exact same trauma and create different stories and narratives that imply a deficiency to that person. Going back to the hello, my name is sticker. Uh, hello, my name is unworthy, mm. undeserving, not good enough, not pretty or handsome enough. Things don't work out for me. Love is pain. Whatever they choose to create as a story based on that trauma. Here's the funny thing with the subconscious mind. It absorbs emotional memories like a sponge. In a singular half a second, literally just an instant, a snap of the finger, when that person got broken up with them, meaning the person that identified negative stories, they soaked up all the feelings of inadequacy, unworthiness. I can never attract the quality of man I want with the ideal lifestyle and love and expectation. And they internalized that and whoop, chuck, chucked it up into the supercomputer highway of the brain. The subconscious mind says, okay, copy. We have a new code here. We're going to defend this till the death of us. That is not nice. And obviously you were not aware of this. We can't change that. None of us get a guideline. Probably until much later, 
obviously one, I think the reason is obviously that's just not the way that we're taught in school yeah. to control our thoughts. You know, that's not what's put in our curriculum no. by the government or anything like that. No. And two, but it would be a good course in school. I should teach that course. That's actually a really good idea. <sighs> anyway, back to we what have, I was trying to big say. Plans. Big plans. Back to what I was trying to say. So Whatever we chucked up into the supercomputer highway of the subconscious brain, the subconscious brain said, copy. We have a new code now. This is what we're going to do. But do you see how two identical people from similar background, race, religion, just exactly how I created this little experiment, can go off on two separate paths and have radically different lives, experiences, expectations around love? Insert your money example here. Insert your health example here. Insert any example you'd like here. What story we create out of a trauma is going to be our new magnet, our new hello, my name is attraction sticker that's going to come and be like the world's strongest force field. And if the sticker said, hello, my name is, I'm unworthy of love. I will get men that make me feel unworthy of it. Now, I don't get to control how they show up in my world, but in hindsight, after each and every relationship that I have after that, because that was what preliminary, like was the preliminary chucking. The story. The story that I internalized blindly. Why? Because my emotions were heightened and I also wasn't aware of what what was happening and how to control my reality, that is going to attract me five whatever different men, however many people you've been with, to make you feel unworthy. Maybe the first one does it through ghosting. Maybe the second one does it through rejection. We don't get to choose how we've been hurt, but our brain always aligns us with certain people based on our level of consciousness certain experiences based on how we're identifying certain real life experiences based on how we think and speak and our inner self-talk going back to neuroplasticity if you chucked all that up into the brain basically what you've been doing is consciously or unconsciously this is my dumbbell here imagine that every day for 10 years 20 years. Let's say you found this information at the age of 20, which would be kind and really, really nice. I wish I found this that soon. Basically, what you've been doing for 20 years is you've been exercising this muscle like Arnold up in the gym, getting those gains, pumping that iron. And this muscle is solid. And now you find this information and you're like, hang on. I don't want to keep strengthening this new neural high, uh, this uh, not new, but this new, uh, this, I keep saying new, this neural pathway in my brain anymore. Because in your brain, when you think those thoughts, feel those feelings, bring up those memories of, hello, my name is, I'm unworthy. What we see as scientists that hook you up to these brain scans is the color that we see on the brain scan is strong. That memory that muscle memory has been practiced again and again and again you'll get this big bright vibrant color okay now what i am challenging you to do and anyone who cares about your well-being and quality of life is going to challenge you to do is to say hang on if everything well not everything but my dominant experiences have been brought to me by me chucking things up there blindly i have some code I would like to take the moral responsibility to undo and rewrite. I'm taking accountability for my own well-being, as Brad Yates would say. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to practice this muscle right now anymore. I'm going to create a new story and a new code, and I'm going to start to strengthen this side. But that's going to be, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to feel good. It's going to feel so uncomfortable wildly uncomfortable i know i don't think i want to do that well do you want to just stay over here and keep attracting that but that's going to be hard that's going to be hard to do you know why why because 
I'm not used to that. I, I know. I don't like it. I know what you mean. And I completely empathize with you. But see, here's my, here's my counter proposal to you. If you don't start to get familiar mentally rehearsing and practicing and creating a new neural highway, a new but neural I, pathway in I'm your not brain. worth it. But that's just because you practice this like 5,000 times. I don't times. believe it's going to happen. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. The reason you don't believe it's going to happen though is because you practice this 5,000 times. But that feels comfortable. I know. It's like the world's most comfortable PJ that we have to throw away because it's sweaty and disgusting and has holes in it. I'm not going to let you live in that quality of PJ. I'm trying to put your ass in silk. I know. You're going to have to get used to this new upgrade. I don't think I, I mean. I know what you mean. Just, just, just trust me here for a second. Imagine if everything that has worked out up and until this point in your life validates this story. Doesn't that exactly validate what I'm saying? It does. So technically, you've got nothing to lose. Because if you keep practicing this, this little magnet you're putting here, you're guaranteed to keep being set up for those experiences. Gotcha. You have to try to believe in something bigger because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're guaranteed to stay stuck here. Right. But you have a possibility of better here. You're in a situation where it's like you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Right. You know what I mean? I do. I swear to you. I was just trying to like test I know. you, you know? I know. You told me to test you. I know, and that's what I want you to do. Good. And this is this is what I go through when I get objections with people anyway. So, what she's saying, which is absolutely accurate, and she's kind of representing, you know, how someone would give me counter proposal answers is you have to begin to practice this muscle. Is this muscle weak? In this example, you've not used it for 20 years of your life. This is a noodle arm over here. Noodle. When you start to practice your repetitions by going inward, cleaning up your mental diet, changing your inner self-talk, beginning to feel and expect and create that new identity and show up as that person, him, her, it, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to feel uncomfortable. Why? Because you're basically, imagine the new neural pathway as an actual literal neural highway. Imagine in your brain, you're trying to create a highway to go and drive up and down and to practice that muscle. You have to, when you create a highway, clear the land, pave it, pull out all the trees and weeds and everything of that highway that you never used a day in your life. Is that uncomfortable to the land? Yeah, you bet your ass it is. Is that uncomfortable to your mind? Yeah, you bet your ass it is. Are you gonna get 101 objections by your subconscious mind because you've been putting false coding? Yep. And now you're trying to redo the coding and the coding's like, no, 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 you told me this. You told me this. I have to defend it. Mm. Am I going to get anxiety in the process? Absolutely. Absolutely. Am I going to feel wildly uncomfortable? Yes. I'm not trying to sit here and tell you this is comfortable. But That's why only 1% of people actually really get out of truly uncomfortable situations is because the controlled use of their thoughts, speech, and mind is really hard. But you have to learn to select your thoughts the same way you select your clothes every day, and it gets better with time. If you starve out your justification for why it can't work, if you stop identifying with the fact that love is piss poor, even though you have decades of experience that it is piss poor, you will start to create a new neural pathway. I need you to mentally rehearse your 2.0 level of your life. You with the husband, with the kids, in the house, making pancakes on a Sunday morning. Amen. The only way that the discomfort goes away is by rehearsing it, practicing it, 
Because the problem is the reason it feels so uncomfortable is because you've practiced this 100 million times. Imagine telling someone every day for 20 years, love will never work out for you. And then on the 21st birthday, you start to say, love will work out for you. Every part of their brain is going to say no. Let me give you a different example. Let's say that we taught an infant two plus two equals six. Anyone outside of that reality knows that that's not the case. But that 21-year-old kid, after those 20 years go by, may defend that till the death of him and her. That's what he was taught. Because that's what he was taught. It's going to feel uncomfortable to think differently. He's going to start to defend, no, this is how my teacher or my parent taught me this. What you're saying is wrong. You've learned it wrong. And imagine your subconscious mind, your brain, as that justification system. If you've always, or for the majority of your life, for several years, chucked into the supercomputer highway of your brain, love doesn't work out for me, money is scarce, I have to always sacrifice, and you try to say now that money is not scarce, love will come to me, life can work out for me, your brain's going to interject intrusive thoughts and memories that say, don't you remember that time Bobby left? Don't you remember that time you and your family got evicted out of the house? Don't you remember that time when your friends abandoned you? Life never works out for you. It's almost like a mental warfare that you're fighting with your own computer because you're trying to redo the hard drive. Yep. What I'm saying is knowing and expecting the discomfort to happen helps you overcome it because there's no magic pill to make the discomfort go away other than persistence and starving out your attention to that old story and that is hard how disciplined are you do you identify yourself as someone who wants change someone who has big girl big boy dreams then you have to put on the core corresponding big boy, big girl pants. I was going to say the pants. Yeah, to get it pants, done. Pants, yeah, pants, yeah. The way that you step into a new identity is you feed your brain the new stimulus to create that new neural pathway so that you can strengthen it with the strength of Thor while simultaneously, you have to do both or it won't work, starve out your attention to these intrusive thoughts, intrusive memories, and remind yourself, technically this checks out. I can trust and believe in science. If I sit down and draw a diagram of everything that I formatively put into my brain, this checks out. This experience made me feel this. This situation verified this belief I have. If I go and complain to my friends every weekday that Men are terrible. This dating culture sucks. I have gotten that. So I'm using that justification to say, okay, if if my brain gets too chaotic, maybe I'll take a nap. Maybe I'll do a meditation. Maybe I'll go on a walk. Walk away from it for a bit. Maybe walk away from it a bit. Maybe I'll plug back into and go into my mental and rehearse that new story. And that's what I need to do again and again because I can't keep feeding my doubts and tell a new story. That's practicing the mastery of two highways at the same time. Mm -hmm. And technically, you'll never get the other one to be greater because this one already has 20 years of dominant strength. If you keep reaffirming your old story, you're never going to break the pattern. Your brain needs the pattern to be broken. You will feel uncomfortable. Expect it to be uncomfortable. Have strategies put in place to stabilize you mentally. A couple ways that you can do this. The journal in the link in my bio. Any of our programs or coaching. You have every ability to do that. Any of the 300 videos that's here on this page. You have, you have sources. You have an overwhelming amount of resources to help improve the quality of your life. Overwhelming amount of resources. And if you need anything above and beyond that, if you want an expedited path, obviously you can sit down with either one of us. 
brain vomit out all your problems, worries, and concerns. And we will. And we will tell you exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it, and how you need to do it, and put together a daily routine to improve this. Absolutely. If that's not your vibe, you can continue to peek out on the page, see all the crazy success stories, go to the YouTube page, which is also linked in the bio. I have individuals who've reversed their HIV. You trying to get love is so, such a small goal. It's such a small goal. People are out here struggling with really big issues. I had a gentleman reverse his cancer diagnosis in four days. Your brain has an ability to rewire its whole chemistry in as little as four days. I don't put that type of restriction on people. I say, take 90 days. Take a good day, take a bad day, take a day off. But if you are outside of a 90 day time frame and you're doing things with the due diligence I have described here, it is my moral and ethical obligation to say, if you want change and you haven't changed outside of 90 days, Mm -hmm. your point of attraction hasn't changed, the likelihood that that magic video is going to stumble into your life you and need- just speak to your exact situation is very slim. You need help. And I see people sometimes waste, however you want to look at it, 10 years of one's life trying to manifest something. At that point in time, if you're outside of 90 days and you've got empty hands to show, it's because you're not doing something right. Mm-hmm. That will need to be... Figured out and addressed with someone who actually knows this work. I have a, oh, I have a question for you. Tell me the question. What if I'm, 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 I have no patience. I need this now. Mm. I have so much resistance purses. I want to see this now. Okay. Resistance and impatience. Great. I love that. So then it should be your number one priority to get your mental in check. If you want something really, really fast. I don't see it. You're not going to see it with that attitude. (laughs) But I'm telling you, I want to see this now. If you want to see it now, then do what I'm saying. I am doing what you're saying. You're not doing what you're saying. So are you trying to convince me that when you wake up in the morning that you just float? Gravity doesn't work for you. Is that what you're trying to tell me? You are not that special. Listen, I'm doing the work. I don't see it. But guess what I'm doing? What? I'm looking for validation. If you're looking for validation, you're going to be looking for a long time, lady. I, uh, you're going to be looking for a long time. I'm just saying. At the end of the day, I need validation. you go first. I, I need validation. You going inwards and relentlessly claiming it will actually be the best course of action to get validation from the outside. Mom's doing that thing, in case you guys know or don't know, um, where I talked about the angel and the devil where some people have objections to certain things, so she's representing that side of it. And guess what? When I get a text message, that person has to text me instantly. And if they don't, what happens? What does it mean about you? It means I'm not, I'm not getting what I want. I understand that, but what does it mean about you? It just means what? You're garbage? No. What does it mean about you? I need that validation like, in, like all the What time. does it mean about you, lady? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Answer my question. What does it mean about you? Not- it means you're unworthy. It means you're undeserving. It means things can't happen. What's the story you're creating out of the absence of your desire? That's what you need to work on. I'm working on that. Well, <laughs> you need to work harder, honey. Why are you so mean? <laughs> you need to work harder. I'll be honest. Okay. I'll be you. honest. I love you too. Yeah. So we're just trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to prove a point. We're trying to, in a very playful way, show you all the objections that some people give in this type of situation, because this work is quite literally, although I can't like legally say that kind of guaranteed. I've never known someone that's gone all in, in their situation I had chronic fatigue in 2018 and 2020. I sat in meditation and healed myself. Good. Boom. Yes. It Congratulations. Happens. It works. So happy for you. I've never had someone go all in for themselves, change their inner narrative, change their speech, change their, how they felt about having the desire, made it safe and easy for them mentally to have it, changed their identity and became that person and just sat here with empty hands. It doesn't work that way. If you do the work, 
your brain will have to bring it to you. That should be your motivation to do it. You have to start believing in things that are a little bit bigger than yourself because I promise you anyone that may come with an objection, the reason you have that objection is because you've practiced this for 20 years and now I'm trying to tell you to practice this and you're like, I don't have the same strength. You have to stop shaming yourself and believing that it's not going to happen. Sabotage. No, because at the end of the day, Everyone has fears the same way. Everyone has doubts the same way. Everyone has anxiety the same way. Everyone has discomfort the same way. There's no way to get rid of that because your brain is going to protect itself. Now that you know what to expect, take a day off, a week off, and be in a situation where you do a mental audit and figure out where are your limitations, where are your stories. The journal is a great place to do that. I literally teach you how to do it in the manifestation journal. I teach you how to go through my process without me so that you can get your dream life and then email me and come on live and tell everybody about it. And we're going to do a live this week with one of my success stories. There's so many success stories everywhere. My God. I'm so happy. So the issue with the subconscious mind, we've never questioned a single thing we chucked in there. Now we're trying to question it. It's your job to question it. Is it really written in a book that life doesn't work out for me? Is that a literal fact or is that a story I created when life let me down? Exactly. It's a story you created when life let you down. What story are we going to choose? What narrative are we going to follow? Because the thing is, whatever we choose to put in there, That's a choice. But you may say, Persis, I didn't choose for life to hurt me and let me down. That's why I tossed that in there. If you undo the metaphorical big ball of yarn and you take things down to its bare bones and you completely dismantle the PC, you go down to the nuts and bolts of the situation, there was a single formative experience that that put it in there. I know life has been hard. I am empathetic to that. I want better for you. And the way to get better is to start to control your inside, your inner uh, mental dialogue. Control your thought, control your speech, control your emotion, create that alter identity and show up each day in the best possible plan. Because there's no such thing as I was meant to suffer in this life. No such thing. That's just what you were coded. That's what you coded. I've had individuals get tarot readings, go to different people and say that money wasn't supposed to work out. And those people worked with me and they're now multimillionaires. They're celebrities and they are, they closed book deals and signed multi-million dollar actor and actress contracts. I had a gentleman that applied my teachings and manifested a 3.5 billion, billion with a B, cryptocurrency win. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And money wasn't supposed to work out for them. That wasn't part of their plan. Your plan is self-created. You have God within you. You have unfortunately had certain lessons in your life, certain rock bottoms you've hit to come into this information. But you will never convince me and I will never believe you if you think you were put on this earth for a more diminished life. It's, yeah, it's no. just not the case. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying what you're selling. No. You need to try a little harder. We need to try a little harder. We need to educate ourselves a little bit more. We need to be in a situation where we choose better. Whatever you choose to continue to feed or chuck up into your subconscious mind is going to be what you get out. It's going to play out in your reality. I hope this lecture was helpful for people. Anyone who may want my assistance, coaching, The Manifestation Journal, it is available in almost every major country worldwide. Any of my products, programs, or anything about that, 
Everything's in the bio. Everything's in the description box. If you missed any part of this live, it'll be repurposed onto my YouTube page, the same name Manifest with Persis, all of my social media handles, as well as what I offer and what I teach and preach, along with the success story interviews are all posted. Does anybody need like- I'll post on the page. Um, what's the word? I had a client, um, anyone who needs a kick in the pants, let me know. Yeah. If you want someone to fast track your success and hear check. everything, reality check. get a reality check, hear everything, and then just tell you what to do, you can do that as well. I love getting answer keys to exams because for me personally, I would rather hire someone to give me the answer key than to sit here and study for one month, two months, three months, four, like Dr. Seuss, and potentially not get it. Sure. I like the easier path. I think that's worth the investment. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. This will be repurposed and understand your controlled thought, speech, emotion, identity will end up dictating your point of attraction. What ends up coming in next? I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you all in the next one.